right, so you've just watched Willem um, perform a stripping run and then a finishing run on white wine brandy. And hey, I get to do the good uh, stuff, which is basically deciding upon his fractions, what's heads, what's hearts, and what's tails. Where do we cut? So basically, um, what I need to assess right now, based on the Holy Trinity, on the taste model, on the three-dimensionality of heads, hearts, and tails, what's in the mix of a good brandy and what's outside of the mix. And the way the fractions start is, of course, at number one. And we've got 21 little beakers here that all are little fractions of the run. And it's a fair assumption to actually decide, or at least express that the hearts are in the middle. So part of the first few beakers are probably contaminated with very light boiling point, very light boiling point alcohols. You remember those, otherwise you need to watch the video again. And probably the later parts, the last few beakers are contaminated with heavy uh, molecules, the high boiling point molecules that bring over that third dimension. Now this is a brandy. Right, and a brandy is a two, maybe 2.5 dimensional drink. It's fruity, so we need some head smearing. We need a minimal amount of tail smearing. The more tail smearing we do, the more overpowered the fruity flavors will get because, well, you remember that those flavors, the flavors of the tails are much stronger than the fruity flavors at the beginning. So we need to be careful there. Do we want to barrel age? Then maybe we want to go one deeper. If not, if you want to drink it white or soon, we don't have a lot of aging time left. That means we probably skip that beaker out just to be sure at the end. This one is essential because fruity flavors are essential for the definition of a brandy. This one is essential, the tails cut because we can easily overpower the fruity flavors or we're in for a very long aging time to help mellow those flavors out. Um, there's two ways to approach this basically. And that's by tasting. And very often the advice is start in the middle and work your way out. Um, I think that's a good way because then you can see the slow transitions towards fruitiness and the slow transitions towards more earthy and more rooty flavors. You can also taste it like this, working your way to, the, to my right, to your left, and the other way around, and see where the flavors hit you. Early part of the run, early part of your mouth, the front of your mouth. The later part of the run, it's more at the back end. It starts to transition more to the back end. In the middle where the hearts are, it's probably on top of your tongue, in the middle of your mouth. It all resonates perfectly well. The way I like to taste or decide on fractions is basically by going to the heads right away because there's less flavor than in the tails. So I like to have the heads cut first and then do the tail skirt. I don't work my way inside out, probably because I've done this many, many times. For you, enjoy the experience. Take a drop, taste it, and slowly work your way in. If you decide where your cut points are, I'll try to explain it as carefully as possible, as careful as, po as is possible on a video in a movie. You have to imagine, that even if there is some tails, or even if there is a little bit of hats, they do, that, do get combined with the rest of the heart, so they dilute. So even if they may be slightly intimidating at first, they do become part of the total mix, which dilutes them. So, you work your way inside out, to the left, to the right, or in my case, because I've done it multiple times, I just start looking at the hats faction, what I enjoy and why I enjoy it. Before I do that, let's, let's go back a little bit. You've, you've seen... Willem work with the app and the app told us like, hey man, you're, you're, you're going to need to cut for heads and you go to hearts and you need to go to tails. That was just an example because this is the first time we use this wine for a brandy. So we didn't have a recipe ready. So what you're basically seeing us do, what you saw Willem do, is create a new brandy. What you're seeing me do in a few moments is basically deciding on cut points for a new brandy. You don't, by every time you make a brandy, need to sort of do this. You only do this once as recipe development. If we want to use this wine and make a brandy from now onwards, by the time I'm done, we know exactly at what temperatures we need to set the heads cut and the hearts cut and the tails and the end cut. 
So it's a one-time thing, but I need you to get some training there so that you can train your palate, so that you can design good recipes. Brandy is easy because somebody already made the wine for us. But if we go towards rum, towards whiskey, of course, things get slightly more uh, complex because now we also have to look at, look at fermentations, at mashing and at more barrel aging uh, related questions. Um, so let's get started. So the assumption is that since this is the start of the run, there will be more hats at this part. I'm not going to go to the most right uh, beaker. Uh, for the viewer left because that is going to be very very headsy so what I want to do instead I want to go maybe to this one four one two three beaker number four and if you zoom in you can actually see that it says a certain temperature so this one was cut until 84 degrees now 84 degrees in my experience given the fact that lower boiling point alcohols usually boil over at temperatures well um, below 80, 82 degrees, 84 is probably going to be hard. 84. So let's taste it. You put a finger in there, put a sip in your mouth, and that's perfectly fine fruit brandy. Quite strong, didn't dilute yet, we'll do that later. Nice flavor intensity at the front of the mouth. So this one is definitely in. So the, the cut actually needs to be somewhere here. Let's have a look at this one. This is closer to the beginning, so it should have more hard smearing. And the temperature says 79.7. 79.7, which is way lower, way lower than the 84 of the beaker before that. So let's see how this one tastes. Ooh, that's forward. Hits you in the beginning, first second. It's got a little bit of a bite to it. It's a bit hatsy, there's some hat smearing there. But then again, it's a fruit brandy, right? So I'm thinking I want this one in. So that probably means that the hat's cut is going to be either over here, and this is what we toss out, or maybe this one needs to go into the mix. Now let's see. It's hatsy, it bites the lips. Uh, in itself, it's plain hats, but, but I wouldn't drink it as it is. But in the combination with the rest, let's see. And this one, this little one, is the first run. You can see temperature 77.2, so below the boiling point of ethanol, which makes perfect sense because that's where the low boiling points are. By definition, I didn't even smell it, but by definition, this is going to be very hatsy and for sure the part we're going to toss. Yeah, that's acetone. And you can also do a little trick, I'll show you. Basically create a bit of evaporation area and use your eye. That was enough actually, that's not in. Now let's taste this one again, the whole beaker. Nope, it's out also. So this is basically my hats cut. So now, you remember how the app looks, right? We'll, we'll dive in later, we'll, we'll look at it again. Basically what we're going to write down is 79.7. 79.7 is going to be your first cut. So everything before 79.7, you toss out. This is hats, you toss this away. And everything onwards is actually in and is something that will add to the flavor, to the total uh, flavor sensation, the taste of the brandy we're making. So we're pretty sure now that if this is the hats cut and everything we want out, then hearts will stop somewhere here. I advise you, if for nothing else, for training purposes and to have some fun to, maybe with the two of you, test every beaker and work your way down. I'll go to the end of the line directly. I'm first going to look a little bit at the temperatures. So this one is 92. <coughs> it's still the hats from beaker number one. This one is almost 93. And Will didn't collect everything because we can see that this one is 95.2. 
95.2, well, you know, water boils at 100 degrees, so Willem could have gone further, but he stopped because for sure at 95, we are into tails territory. But the question is, where do they start? And just like hats are hitting you at the front of your mouth and your gum and your lips, and if you blow over it with your, with your eye open, it starts, starts to sting very much. The, the way in which we detect tails is by where does it hit us on the palate? Is it really at the back end in the throat? Does it start to bite in the throat? And also, does it have a smell like wet carbon or a wet dog? You probably walk the dog every now and then, and if it rains, for sure, you're the guy that has to walk the dog. And you remember that rancid smell that comes off the dog after he walked in the rain? That's because there's a lot of fat in the fur in the coat of a uh, dog. And if you wetten this, it starts to evaporate and gives off bad flavors that resemble very strongly the bad flavors into tails. So if you smell wet carbon or a wet dog, you're probably very much into the tails, 93.7. 94 very often is a very good point to start considering. So I'll take this one, 93.7. Yeah, there are some tails. It takes a few seconds to develop because the first, the parts at the beginning and the middle need to dissolve and there are no parts at the beginning and the middle simply because those are over here and over there. So there are some tails there, but I would like this one in. Now let's go, let's go back and forth a little bit. Oh, that's good stuff for sure. So I'm hesitating on this one. This one is in, right? So we already have the hearts cut right here, right now. This one's in. So, this one's in, this one I wasn't sure about, let's go to this direction. I think it's really a decision or if you want to make your product drinkable right away. If you want to make your product drinkable right away, this is going to be your cut. If you actually want to age it a little bit longer on a barrel, you need a bigger back end, you add this beaker as well. So basically, the cuts you now program into your app is at the beginning, 79.7, and at the end, here it is, 92.8, if you want to have product, you can drink basically right away white. Or 93.7, if you actually want to age it or barrel age it a little bit to create a bit more complexity at the back end. We're in basically 15 minutes and normally we can do this much faster, especially with a little bit of training, is that uh, we can decide on cuts and we just made a recipe. Willem did all the hard work, what he basically did is do the run, make the cuts, and made sure that they were perfectly aligned here, even on this table. So I could just walk in and say like, yeah, I don't want this in. And depending on what product I want to make, I actually want this in for each product, a little bit more of a back end, or I want it out. That's how easy it is. We just take those two temperatures that you wrote down, or in this case, Willem wrote down already, and those are the only two temperatures that you need to dial in if you want to collect tails, you maybe go to 95, 96, but there's really no reason in a brandy to actually collect those because the only thing you do is spend a lot of energy on distilling, wait longer until the run is done. You could just turn off the machine, toss this alcohol away. It's not worth collecting. This is, and depending on what recipe you want to make, an aged brandy, it's in, an unaged brandy, it's out. Now the fun thing is, you just saw us make, basically within three, four hours, uh, a new brandy recipe and a successful brandy, brandy recipe. And basically, two brandy recipes, right? The aged one, or the one we want to sell or want to drink white. That's all it takes if you understand the Holy Trinity, if you understand where smearing plays a role in creating or in adding more flavors at the front end and the back end of your mouth. The longer we want to age, or if we have product that is more three-dimensional, like 
uh, a pot still style uh, rum or whiskey, the deeper we go into tails. Also gives us more time for aging. Whiskey needs at least three years of aging, at least in, uh, in, um, in Europe. I think it's, well, depends a bit on the category where you are in Australia, America, it can be two years. Uh, you can add more tails if you can age or need to age or want to age longer. This is a perfect cut. If we're going to have a party tonight, what I do is I'll basically add these together in one big beaker, start to look at what proof it is, how strong it is, and then calculate, but we'll do that on another video, how much water and what kind of water I need to add in order to marry the water and the alcohol, bring it back down to maybe 43 or 44 or 45%, depending on what percentage you actually want your brandy to be bottled or consumed at. Some go as low as 40. As a craft distiller, I wouldn't do that because the more you dissolve your alcohol, the lower proof you go to. First of all, the more water you add, the less flavor remains, but also the solvency power of your beverage is going to be lower. So if you have more tails in there, it depends a bit on the product. You cannot really go to 40% because those oilsy, tailsy bit of the last end of the run will come out of solution and potentially clog up, cloud up your drink. You don't want that. Um, big alcohol goes 40% simply because if you go from 44, 45% to 40%, just basically by adding water, you can produce 10, 11% more beverages, more spirits. We're winning this battle on flavor, not on economies of scale, not on lowering the proof, not on bad or very thin flavors. That's why I think for a fruit brandy, 42, 43 is really the low end where you want to be at. But again, we'll do that on another video. For now, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for watching me taste brandy. Now go and do it yourself. Buy those bottles of wine, white preferably, organic, and do the distillation procedures like we showed you. And then dial, actually dial those temperatures of your cut into your app do the run again with the same wine and instead of collecting everything in little factions now the second time we're not going to do that you're going to do that collect all the hats in a bigger beaker collect all the hearts in one bigger beaker and then collect the tails as far as you want to collect them in a third beaker and all of a sudden because we did recipe development and we trained you how to approach it and you actually dial those numbers into your still control app the app will tell you when you need to cut for heads hearts and tails and you'll replicate using the same wine you'll replicate the same brandy recipe as you've made the first time using this more extensive way of approaching distillation but then again i already said that this is how you do it the first time on recipe development and now with this information we automate Run number two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. On the mini, you use the uh, still control app. But if you want to scale up to, let's say, an iStill 2000 or 5000 with all the automation and robotization there, you still use those temperatures and dial them in for your heads, hearts, and tails cut. They're the same. Correct it for air pressure, the unit will take care of it on any scale. That is the fun part of the mini. Whatever you program, whatever you decide, recipe-wise, what you want in your recipe based on doing runs with a mini, you can basically scale up to bigger units and or reproduce by using the current still control app. And that basically sums it up for today, uh, guys. Thanks for staying with me while I'm uh, having fun tasting some brandy over here. Uh, again, Willem will show you how to dilute it to, let's say, 43, 44, or maybe 42%, but not lower than that. And then the party can get uh, really started. Again, thanks, and bye-bye.